the Pleiadians, the game, the codes, the master numbers. By Barbara Marciniak, from the book, Keys to the Living Library. August 15, 2016. Website. NewSunUnity.com. Produced by Higher Self. We are here for the game, the codes, and the master numbers. It is part of our karma to deal with Earth at this time, for what we set into motion is what we must dance with. Our ancestors created events that presently stifle our development on the Pleiades, and, as Pleiadians, we are seeking to discover the solutions to this grand dilemma, a predicament that you share with us. Our civilization, in a future from where you are, is in peril so we have been impulsed to go on a journey to find a solution to what has been chasing us. We are in your future and, in order to discover what is going on, we went further into our future to meet our teachers, the keepers of existence, who can also be called the keepers of time. As they taught us how to traverse the various sectors of time, we were enticed to journey back in time to discover where events were stored and locked away. We examined where storms were brewing that were affecting our past, as we were viewing it from the future of our future and, as we view it from now, from your moment of reality. Our ancestors came from a universe that had completed itself and understood universally that it was Prime Creator, as the journey of Prime Creator in time. They came from a universe that had discovered its essence, creativity. By discovering that essence, they found out that they were the creators. They came into the Pleiades because that star system would someday be able to help you at a most challenging time, a time when you would be ready to reconnect with Prime Creator. Our ancestors were some of the original planners of Earth, orchestrators who seeded worlds and civilizations with light and information through creativity and love. Our ancestors are also your ancestors. They gave their DNA to the original planners, and this DNA became part of the DNA of the human species. The plan was to create an intergalactic exchange center of information within your planet, Earth. It was an extraordinary plan, involving a beautiful place, for Earth is located on the fringe of our galactic system and is easily reached from other galaxies. Earth exists close to many way portals, the highways that exist for energies to travel throughout your space zone. Many of you may have the feeling that you have done this before. You have. This is your multidimensional memory of when you have gone to other systems and done the same thing. It is a very familiar process because, characteristically, as members of the family of light, this is what you do. You inform systems. You go in and reconstruct realities, and you are experts at it. You lost your memory of the process because you came here to operate under the same laws as everyone else. Therefore, you came in as human with your memory completely erased. You knew before you arrived that losing your memory was part of the process, and you specifically picked the moment of time and the parentage that would give you the best connection to energetically and genetically bring about your purpose. When you incarnated into the earth plane, you received certain matched and paired recessive genes holding light codes that gave you the highest opportunity to develop psychic and intuitive abilities. In addition, these genes carried some memory that separated you from others, even though you could not name it. With these powers and talents, it has been your task to build on your life and allow the momentum to lead you into something different than most humans. As an extensive mutation occurs on the inside of humans, also stimulated from the outside by those who are assisting you in this genetic upliftment, you must act and integrate what is awakening within you. Let us give you a scenario here. Picture yourself as a member of the family of light, not looking anything like you look right now. Click into your cosmic identity. You are in a classroom, and an instructor is speaking to you, giving you the highlights of the assignment of returning to Earth to become part of the system in order to change it. You are very much at the top of your profession, 
you believe yourself to be an impeccable systems buster. In this class, you are in great humor because the professor is explaining something to you. When you go down to earth, believe it or not, you are going to need to have us come and instruct you because you won't remember any of this. And all of you systems busters laugh because you know that, as cool as you are now, once you submerge yourself, you will not remember this classroom. The professor says, watch this. We will show you pictures. See, there we are coming through a vehicle, and there you are in your human disguise, and you act as if you don't know what is going on, this is part of your assignment. You are briefed on all of this, you understand? In that classroom you were coded to respond to us as Pleiadians, and to many others. As you open to your greater identity, be receptive and willing to go beyond your boundaries, because this is what we are striving for. We intend to implant new images in your mind to take you further. It doesn't matter how we do it. It doesn't matter if it is true. It simply matters that we create new images for you. One day you will find the groove yourself, and then you will understand what we have been after all this time. You will understand that sometimes we have completely made things up in order to trigger something inside of you in order for you to grow as a human being. We are very crafty teachers. It is time for you to make a commitment to create joy, creativity, and love for yourself. Only then will you benefit others, for if you do not evolve yourself, you do not serve others. By becoming a living example, by following what is in your heart, you show the way for others to follow with courage what is in their hearts. We are not here because we have nothing else to do. We are here to assist the transformational process that is now beginning to bubble and create steam around your planet. In the past few years, multitudes have awakened, remembering a grand and significant purpose to life. If you knew as much as your higher self knows at this time, you would be very impatient with this assignment. It involves incarnating, as a human, thinking you are a human, evolving yourself into something more than a human, and then realizing that you were more than human in the first place. Though it may seem backwards, it is necessary in order for you to go through the evolution of your consciousness as a human being. The transformation requires a mass awakening, spurring you on to consciously evolve as a life form. This process involves choice as a key. You are going to do it step by step, and others will watch you do it and have the courage to follow. Humans are considered by some in this universe to be priceless, though in actuality you yourselves have no idea of the value stored in the human body. Your human body is the most valuable thing you will ever own and encounter. You are priceless. Battles have long been fought over Earth, and as a result, you have been purposely enticed away from discovering the wealth of data stored inside of you by controlling or limiting forces. You are purposely taught that you are insignificant and valueless so that other forms of intelligence will not come and tap into you. Those who control you cannot get the formulas out of you, so they keep you hidden away, quarantined and isolated. In this way, others who need what you have cannot get to you. You are taught the dance of the disempowerment, which you choreograph as a species. You are now learning to find your own value, a value we intend to share, teach, and encourage you to discover through an ongoing process. The value you discover about yourself will grow and grow as you wonder at these formulas inside of you, which we call the codes for other civilizations. Earth is a microcosm of the macrocosm, a miniature version of what is happening all over, except that Earth is a trigger point, what we call a kernel. You know that a kernel is a seed. We have come back to Earth to assist the members of the family of light, who have been seated here, in this essential time when events can be altered. Time is greatly misunderstood in third dimensional reality and is much more flexible than you realize, allowing simultaneous movement into realities by stretching, distorting, curving, and twisting itself around. 
you have been born on earth to change the course of history by inserting yourself from the future into the past. In this way, you reshape the past. You are a seedling for change. We have suggested that approximately half a million years ago tumultuous events took place in this area of existence that affects your present day earth. To a large degree, earth lost her sovereignty, and another force of rulership came in and claimed ownership to this prime hunk of real estate that you call home. These recently appointed godlike administrators have not always been the kindest and most benevolent sorts. Earth was established billions of years ago for a purpose. She was to be an intergalactic exchange center of information, part of a vast library system where data from many galaxies was stored, a living library, to be precise. The creator gods, those who believed themselves to be the forces of creation, came together, pooled their knowledge, and created forms of life. They borrowed DNA and combinations of genetic material from many different worlds. They stored this material in Earth's library system, which was connected to a system of 12 cosmic libraries. You can see that the plan for Earth was a grand one. The original planners of Earth were members of the Family of Light, beings who worked for and were associated with an aspect of consciousness called Light. Light is information. Members of the Family of Light created the information and would be able to participate and share their specific knowledge. The project of the Living Library on Earth was eventually fought over. Skirmishes took place, and Earth became a place of conflict and duality. Certain creator gods who had the right to do whatever they wanted, because Earth is a free will zone, came in and took over. These creator gods raided Earth approximately half a million years ago, the time period, historically speaking, that you would call the beginning of the latest phase of civilization, the phase of modern humanity. Variations of human life have existed for millions of years. When these skirmishes occurred, a certain group of entities fought in space and won the territory of Earth. These new owners wanted the native Earth species to remain unevolved and uninformed so that the species would be easier to control. The original species of human creation experienced great destruction, and its DNA was scattered. What the gods now realize is that we are in a dilemma in the Pleiades. There is a tyranny that was let loose on Earth, and that tyranny has returned to us. Did you know that we made that tyranny, that we stripped you of your heritage of a fully functioning, 12-stranded DNA? Do not be naive about Pleiadians, including us. Why do you think we are doing this healing work on your planet? Consider that perhaps we need you for our next phase of development. If we wish to grow, we must heal a past that we have been connected to. In our search for why we are in such a big mess in the Pleiades, we were led into the future to show us that our system will go nowhere without you. In other words, we cannot evolve further as creators until we give all our abilities and all our rights to everything we have created. We cannot police and control what we create. This is our dilemma. This is why we wait for you to discover your own experience as a creator. When you do, you will give off a code of formulas. Perhaps even if you become very highly evolved, you will never understand the formulas, not for a long, long time. Others may access the formulas from you, and in exchange you will experience states of ecstasy, alterations of consciousness, or perhaps trips into other worlds. You may not realize you are emitting the formulas when you do this. Others who need the formulas will use them to replicate lives, or to re-establish systems that are being destroyed. When those codes of information or formulas are set out in existence, we will be free because the codes of consciousness contain the songs of your own freedom, sung as frequency and broadcast from the cells of your body. We are reminding you of what you know inside yourself. We have come onto this planet to trigger your memory bank, to inspire the human race through light, so that you will begin to remember who you are and create your own reality. 
you will alter the frequency on the planet and claim rightful ownership of yourself and this territory. You will rise to the opportunity to master the situation as you trust in abilities that you did not think you had. We have a very deep fondness for each and every one of you because you have helped us, you have assisted us in delivering something. Your planet is a most miraculous place, and there are those who see your planet from a distance and realize many things. You do not see your planet from a distance. You experience your planet firsthand. It was just a number of years ago when pictures of Earth, viewed from space, were shown to you for the first time, offering all of you a visual image of yourself as a whole. If someone were to study you from space, you would all look alike if that someone did not know how to read the vibrations you emit. There is something that we are getting at here. These last few years, you have been impulsed into diving more deeply into personal exploration, the meaning of identity, and connecting with your cosmic overview of life itself. Perhaps at first it seemed as if you were reaching far beyond the parameters of civilization. Perhaps civilization was moving as you extended the boundaries. Your dedication to re-evaluating, reconsidering, and reorganizing your basic assumptions about life has expanded the expressions of civilization itself. You humans have no other choice than to reach out to the new territory that you lay forward as both charted and uncharted discoveries. For the last half million years, various civilizations on Earth have been seeded from different star systems that were part of the original library program. Each appeared at a different time period, penetrating a controlled force field that isolated Earth and kept it inaccessible as a library. These civilizations would flourish for 500 years, 5,000 years, 10,000 years, then the forces that owned the planet would somehow shoo them away or destroy them. These civilizations could not establish ownership here, so they left clues or steps to the latter as part of the master plan. When enough humans can read the clues seeded by these civilizations, Earth's keys for harmonious cosmic existence will be understood. Egyptians, Incas, Balinese, Greeks, Tibetans, Sumerians, Native Americans, Maya, Aboriginals, and many, many other indigenous peoples have contributed keys of understanding, all appointing to the heavens. If present-day humans could read the steps and clues left by these cultures, they could once again liberate and own Earth. Each culture, in some way, held the library open and was able to infuse its civilization with life-charging stellar connections. Each was creatively unique, leaving a mysterious psychic footprint in your cellular memory as a piece of the puzzle. Where did these civilizations come from? Do you think they sprang up out of the ground like daisies? They were created from thought. They were impulsed into being. All the cultures that achieved high ideals were conceived of by the game masters. In each world and each domain, the idea of freedom was completely different. On Earth, the idea that humans could be owned and treated without respect came onto the planet half a million years ago, and was very pronounced in many areas of the world. Humans, or versions of humans, were used as slaves to dig in mines or to vibrate with certain emotional patterns. Over time, an idealized form of civilization was transduced here on Earth to meet the greatest needs of the people. The greatest teaching brought to the planet was the ideal that all humans are created in equality and that life is to be honored in all forms. This idea was unable to filter down to every level of existence, although it was certainly anchored as a practice in numerous societies. There were those, of course, who were able to honor the rocks, trees, plants, animals, and humans. However, for many, the main issue of what to honor involved themselves, the ones who were here to operate with intelligence and figure out the magnificence of the planet. In some way or another, the game masters had to find different ways to gain back Earth and reteach the value of life. So, over periods of time, the game masters conceptualized entire civilizations, imagining them down to the most minute detail. 
Then they seeded and implanted these civilizations on earth by bringing the inhabitants from the stars. This was done after these beings were honed to fit the genetic line of humans. Expand your concept of existence and imagine this. For an occupation, game masters orchestrate realities and then insert these realities as life forms onto different planets. Game masters get together, like you would for a game of cards or racquetball, only their game involves creating civilizations. They alter and change worlds by allowing variations within civilizations to enter into the realization they orchestrate. These civilizations act totally by impulse, yet all impulses are fed to them through blueprints. All blueprints are formulated ahead of time, just like you, as the family of light, are actually on assignment following a plan designed by yourselves. Game masters are brilliant. Not only do they conceive of the game, and create the entire blueprints for the civilization to flourish in, down to the finest artisans and beggars, they seed themselves into the civilization as well. They know their civilization is complete when their own identities merge with the civilization, so that they are in the civilization and creating it at the same time. The Maya, who lived at one time in Mexico and Central America, were masters at doing this. They were skilled at confounding realities and moving from system to system. Their world was in the Pleiades, and yet they certainly did not reside there, they had their own world. Today, the Maya are on assignment everywhere, confounding many worlds, taking Maya with them as if their civilization had never stopped, but simply had transferred from one world to another. We, as Pleiadians, are a game master experiment. The game masters are formless, and yet they can overlay themselves and infuse themselves in many different shapes. The movies 2001 and 2010 revealed the idea of the game master, showing behind the scenes influences on certain life forms. That is a good analogy, however, don't hang your hat on it. The game masters are unbounded, formless, shapeshifters. They can take any form they choose, for they move between and beyond sound and geometry. The game masters create in their minds the entire blueprints for cultures, and then they open portals to literally insert cultures into the earth plane. Then they allow these cultures to develop and grow, to seed and influence other times. On earth at this time, there are sacred sites and cultures that you think are lost and that you will never be in contact with again. During the Great Awakening and shift in consciousness, these cultures will come alive and will all operate simultaneously because their blueprints will be recalled and magnetized back onto this opening multidimensional plane. The game masters come up with blueprints for civilizations. Now, here is the tricky part. When game masters create a particular blueprint for a civilization, it has many versions of itself and is expressed on many worlds and in many realities. Part of the game master's task is to juggle all of these realities at once, and to learn from every single version of that blueprint. It is like making capes. A tailor makes one cape and gets the idea to make hundreds of other variations of the cape to suit everyone's needs and to suit a necessary essence of the cape itself. That is how the game masters work. So, when game masters create a blueprint, a language, and a method to transducer it onto the planet, the blueprint is not simply anchored into one realm. It is anchored into many realms. The codes and master numbers we seek are geometric formulas and combinations of intelligence stored within the human. The human, of course, is an integral part of the design for the living library. Each creation in the living library has its purpose and has a great amount of data stored in it. Inside the human body are formulas to replicate other forms of intelligence throughout your universe. Feel that out. Inside the evolved 12-stranded human are formulas to create life for other forms of intelligence in this universe. When they designed Earth, other forms of intelligence were able to grasp the reason for Earth's creation. 
they understood that perhaps their own civilizations might one day be annihilated, and they did not want to lose them entirely. So, libraries were built throughout existence, and each was filled with specific data. All forms of intelligence that made the libraries valued their identities and valued their civilizations. They understood how their civilizations were constructed. They valued life. The times are changing, and it is not for you to panic over what is coming. It is time for you to feel the exhilaration inside your being. The time you have been waiting for, your purpose, is on the cusp of being fulfilled. We remind you that you are the family of light, and millions of you are on assignment on Earth at this time. As members of the family of light, you each carry the ability to pull the light frequency into your body and disperse it onto the Earth plane. In this was Earth herself, a viable living creature, can move into her own transition and die to an old order. Some of you are petrified that Earth is dying. You want to build a big wall to stop the death of Earth and the deterioration of the environment. In actuality, all of the events that seemingly are distasteful, difficult, and heinous, create the impetus that is needed to move and activate Earth 6 billion people into change. You are a transducer of energy. Just as we transduce energy from one system of reality onto yours, and our teachers and others transducer to us, you must take what you know and very gently transducer it, playfully, without fear for Earth's inhabitants. Others will see that you are stable, grounded, and loving and that you work in the name of peace. Stay clear on that. Always adhere to the concept of peace as you reach for something, currently unknown, and make friends with energies whose looks could frighten others. You are doing very, very powerful work. We say to you in all honesty and sincerity that your greatest interest, your integrity, your safety, and your nurturance are our first concerns. We do not want to lose you. You are a key for us. Can you conceive of that? Can you feel that in the core of your being? If you can comprehend what we are communicating to you in this moment, it will make all the difference as to how your years unfold. If you can comprehend that we need you, and that we want you, and that you are valuable, and if you can lay your ego aside and open your heart and walk through these territories of the unknown, your days will be marked with splendor. 